All right, I think we go. Yeah, we go the um, hit him on top. I think that's a safe swap. All right, let's get a shot. First time. A few moments later. Oh yeah, it's Photoshop for sure. Wow. Okay. Oh no way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Our first double fighter game, and that's what happens. <laughs> Yo, what? Okay, this might be the team. Hey everyone, I hope season 11 is off to a good start. Even though this season's unranked, we're still gonna put out some content and have some fun with GBL teams. This team I'm about to showcase is a team that I came up with during a patron stream and a lot of my patrons actually used to hit legend at the very last few days of last season. So here to showcase a double fighter team in Johto Cup. The team I'm running is a Macargo lead with Hitmontop a hair cross in the back. Something I noticed when playing in Johto Cup is a lot of teams are quite weak to fighters, especially double fighters. This is mainly because a lot of people aren't using it as well as hair cross not being readily available to everyone prior to the Johto event. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a big fan of double fighter teams and this one is no exception. Before we get into the battles, a big shout out to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you would also like to have early access to my strategies and lineups, as well as my various guides on how to use these teams and additional behind the scenes footage, feel free to sign up in the Patreon link down below. Meganium lead. This one is not nearly as good as you would think against a fire Pokemon. It's not too bad, um, but the good thing here is Her uh, Heracross is really strong against Meganium because it resists all that grass damage. The Hitmontop does a solid as well. I'm gonna shield the hit on top here and then just ensure that I can maintain switch advantage. Should be in a good spot over farming quite a bit. Uh, Steelix is pretty bad against this entire team. So it's Pile of Swine. So I'm in a very, very good spot. I'm gonna throw a Stone Edge here just in case they try to farm me down with Vine Whips, um, but they decide to throw their energy, which is totally fine with me. And then now I'm gonna come in with my Macargo to start. Uh, actually, no, I come in with Heracross. Uh, I figure Heracross could probably count down faster and they're going to concede the match right there. Like I said, a lot of teams are quite weak to fighters, um, and uh, that one probably was as well. All right, so Shadow Amphros, definitely a hard-hitting Pokemon, but after debuffing it, I can easily tank this, especially if they have a counter in the back for him on top. I really don't mind having little farm for them, and there is a Skarmory there. Uh, I don't get a close combat off, but... Um, this is a very solid position for me. I'm going to shield in case it is a flash cannon, ends up being a Braper, that's fine. Now I can farm down all the way. I'm in a very commanding spot at the moment, even if they have some hard checks in the back. Uh, so it's actually going to be an Umbreon. Um, overheat's probably a little better there. I'm going to go Overheat for the second move, um, which probably ends up working out quite well, because uh, that way I don't have debuff damage. Um, I'm going to counter all the way down here and uh, start really chipping away at this Umbreon. Um, I should live a last resort. I won't live a Psychic from this range, um, but uh, most are ten tend to be running last resort. And yeah, as you can see here, able to finish it off. Shadow Gramble, um, definitely very strong against this team. Here's the thing with Shadow Gramble. It hits so hard, even though this Macargo resists the damage there, um, the charms still really add up, um, which is not great. Um, for this team. So definitely have to shield, especially against charm teams. Uh, there's just less time to get shield. Um, I end up, yeah, throwing this move here. Um, probably could farm down. I just didn't want to risk it. Um, and then here comes a uh, lantern, which almost one shots me. Um, but now I am going to land the close combat, which almost takes it out. And no, can't get to another move at this point. So I'm going to come in with my hair cross here and they actually come in with their Skarmory. So I need to throw this close combat one to do a lot of damage, but also to buy myself some time. I'm a switch timer and here we are. Uh, I'm going to uh, shield the sky attack and hopefully get to overheat in time. And we do get to it, which is absolutely huge. Um, a lot of teams quite weak to Macargo leads too, as you can see. Um, so a lot of them tend to stay in. Quagsire, really bad for a team. And Cheggy is not a fan of Quagsire either, apparently. So she is going to dip out of here. Um, yeah, Quagsire. The typical part with Quagsire, and you can see they uh, counter swap me with a Shadow Gramble, is they tend to have two fighting checks in the back. Um, I don't even know if it's meant to, for the fighters per se, but um, it might be more so for the grass, but they tend to have uh, some overlapping weaknesses 
uh, with the poison, with the bugs, stuff like that, um, and with the flyers. So um, this is quite rough, unfortunately, just hard counters kind of throughout. Um, I kind of just need to hope that they're going for a bait here, but they aren't, and it's the right decision. So that one is definitely a tough matchup for sure. Again, like I said, Celix, very, very strong. Um, typically, what I would like to do is throw overheat and then swap to my Hitmon top if they don't swap out. Uh, but this opponent actually lets it go. So, like I said, a lot of teams very weak to Mercargo in the lead, and this is definitely uh, another example of that. They bring in a Shadow Gramble into a Shadow Mercargo. So, kind of, or into a Mercargo, which is kind of interesting. So, I do need to shield this because I need to get off some damage before I come into my with my fighters and it's a Skarmory in the back. So this is actually quite uh, unfortunate because um, this is very strong against my hair cross and my cargo is almost fainted out. But I'm gonna throw these close combats, do as much damage as I can. I should get another one off. I decided to throw it sooner than later rather than doubling up because if I double up, I give the Skarmory more energy uh, than I wanted to. And able to finish off my cargo without them seeing the uh, hair cross in the back. All right. Um, Pile of Swine, like I said, Pile of Swine, very strong. Uh, the whole team is very strong against Pile of Swine, so not concerned about that. Um, I am really weak on this team to both Quillfish and Azu. So this is one of those two, and um, you just kind of have to tag team it, essentially, with all your mons. So we do have it debuffed. I do have to watch out for Sludge Wave, but it looks like this opponent is going straight Aqua Tail. Um, I'm pretty content even not having Switch here because my Hitmon top has a lot of play against this Pilot Swine as well. So farming it down, allowing me to close combat and debuff myself and the swap out is very nice. They actually have an Azu. So not only is this team really weak to Quillfish, it's also really weak to Azu and they happen to have both, which is absolutely rough for me. Um, I'm going to no shield, what might be an ice beam is definitely a risky no shield, but I decided to just go for it. And then I go straight for close combat because I don't think I get to Stone Edge in time. And now I'm going to swap over to my my cargo here um i'm gonna shield this it could be a bait and it is um but that's fine uh so here's the thing with azu most aren't running hydro pump in this meta so i know that the charge move won't ko me and i can just go straight for overheat to finish it off yeah so all resisted charge moves go and go for the overheat to take out an azu which uh i think is pretty tough um but we make it work with this team um as well as the quillfish which is always fun all right um, a lot of people like to safe swap uh, Umbreon in this meta, mainly because it does okay against Azus, and there's not a lot of fighters. Um, but we got fighters on this team, so we're able to do quite well. Even if they have Psychic, you don't have to shield it. You still love a Psychic on him on top. Um, again, like I mentioned before, you want to throw this close combat as soon as possible so that you don't let the Skarmory farm too much off of you here. Um, and then they actually come in with a Meganium. Uh, like I said, a lot of teams are very weak to my cargo in the lead. Um, they really only had one ch uh, check to this, which was Umbreon. Um, Meganium's kind of more neutral-ish with shields. Uh, but at this point in time, they are going to be in a tough spot. Uh, I am going to farm this down. I still have two shields for this uh, last two matchups, and uh, we are in a good spot here. I'm just going to shield again just to be safe. You know, probably would survive it either way. Uh, farm it all the way down, and then we get to uh, the overheats on the game. Sudowoodo, another really tough lead. Kind of like Quagsire, the backline tends to be hard checks this team. I've seen Sudowoodo with an Aerodose in the back and uh, something else that beats uh, fighters slash waters. Um, I just need to hope it's something that beats waters. Uh, like uh, maybe like a Meganium or something or uh, but sometimes there's a jump bluff and I'm in a bad spot Meganium would be nice because Heracross is okay there um, so what I'm doing here is I played into a Sudowoodo Aridos counter swap team many times and I keep losing it so what my plan here is uh, at this point in time to grab all the shields so that I could land some big nukes with close combats with overheat if need be obviously I don't have switch advantage here uh, but the main thing is shields are a little bit less valuable for me at this point than they are for my opponent. So grabbing all their shields, I think, is a better call. I know there's no possible way I could win switch against the Aridos, but that's kind of my train of thought. And here comes the Skarmory. So yeah, really tough. I'm going to throw the close combat right away so I don't get farmed down. Being double weak to flying, it doesn't really help that much. Um, 
And unfortunately, my opponent is going to get to move. So like I said, these are kind of some tough team comps. If you're a big counter user fan, then this team will probably be a lot of fun for you as well. So feel free to give it a shot and let me know how you all do with it. Especially since it's an unranked season, if you're looking for some more competitive play, feel free to join my Discord down below in the description. I do host monthly Sylph Cups, which are show six formats and take quite a bit of skill and will definitely be a good way to practice for regionals and worlds for Pokemon Go. I'll also be hosting some Patreon exclusive tournaments. So if you're looking for some even more tournaments as well, feel free to sign up in the Patreon link down below to get involved in that. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share, subscribe for future content, hit that notification bell to get alerted right when I post a new video, and I'll catch y'all next time.